Welcome everybody to the Soul of Sosa podcast. And my guest today is Brendan Fox, who's living in Florida right now and is a primarily father, husband, and a businessman who specializes in helping people with their fitness and their finances. And very interestingly, you were telling me before this, um, you're now diving into community building relationships. I think you said emotional well-being as well. Yes, social, emotional wellness. Which is huge. I want to start there because one of my mentors was saying that community is the new currency that people are looking for. I feel like there is a progression to well-being that is very far away from survival. And once you start getting towards the top of that pyramid, you want community of other like-minded people. So tell me a little bit more about the last parts of the things that you do. Yeah, so the the community side is huge because I think it's I think it has become more important now than probably ever in history just because of the disconnect that we're experiencing in this technological world that's supposed to make us more connected. Obviously everybody feels that, everybody knows that that's a reality and it seems that it's getting harder to build quality, long-lasting friendships and relationships. And so if you can find a handful of people that you can really connect with and do life with, and, and this is outside of your family, um, maybe, maybe it could be your family, I'm not sure, you know, everyone's family situation is different, but if you can build relationships where you can be very authentic and transparent with a friend who's in a similar type circle, maybe is ahead of you in some parts of life, behind you in other parts of life, you guys can really glean a lot from each other. And so building that up is increasingly important, I think, in today's age. And then on the other side, the social emotional wellness has come in a little bit later in life for me because I really always kind of thought that I had the emotional intelligence thing on lock and good to go. And then I had children. And I realized that when I'm dealing with a child whose brain is not physically developed yet, and there's certain things that they just are so far off on in comparison to me as an adult, so I'm placing false expectations on my children, and then I'm reacting to the things that they're doing or not doing in opposition to whatever I'm expecting them to do. And my emotions are taking over and I'm reacting to the emotions. And so I'm sitting here realizing like, wow, I really don't have a great hold on my emotions. I just thought that I did because they were never really stressed this much. And anybody's going to tell you the same thing. Having kids, if, if you're going to be the best parent that you can be and you're going to put everything you have into being a quality parent, it is incredibly challenging. And it takes everything that you've got. And so that really started to test my, you know, just things like self-awareness, understanding what emotions are for, understanding that every single emotion carries a message as opposed to my old method, which was just if I started to feel any bit of anger or sadness or whatever, I would ignore it, suppress it and move on with logic and reason. Well, that's not a way that's going to continue to be functional, especially when you add children into the mix who you need to teach to regulate their emotions. And also you need to teach by example. Love that. Kids are incredible teachers. And another mentor of mine says that if you want conscious kids, you yourself have to be conscious as well. Hundred percent. So conscious parenting is all the rage because the perspective is we are kids that you have an inner child in you right now. So do I, this, if you ever seen that Benjamin button movie, right? He aged backwards, but the only thing that stays the same, it's definitely not our bodies. Like every seven, eight years, every cell has been changed, but we get this wisdom and this knowledge, but we forget certain important things. So being married, being with a relationship with someone else is an incredible mirror to advanced emotionally. How much more challenging is it raising kids? How has that leveled you up? What have you had to do to 
be able to lead your kids and to parent them. Essentially, what have you been doing to keep up with your kids? Yeah, so so being married, we were married for my wife and I for four years, five years before, yeah, four or five years before having our first child. And we didn't have a lot of emotional, I'll say tests, because we got along really well. We clicked really well. Our relationship has been almost completely positive the entire time. Having kids didn't necessarily dramatically change that, but it highlighted our weak points that we never worked on. And so I just want to bring it back to, to what you what your mentor said, which sounds like a fascinating person, somebody I would want to meet. Just the idea of conscious parenting, that is an idea that I'm trying to shout from the rooftops. And there's, there's a book, I'm going to show this. This book is the most recommended book that I ever recommend. And I recommend it to people who are or are not parents. And the reason is it's, it's technically a parenting book, but un, unlike most other parenting books, it deals with you, the parent. It's not, it tells you, you know, you get an education about child development and why your kids are doing what they're doing and all these different types of things, but it deals with the problems that you have, that you haven't worked on. And so like you were talking about the inner child that we have within, I've come to realize through coaching people through this and just through, you know, growing in my own personal experience, most of us were not raised to understand any of this information about like emotional regulation and things like that. We, I, I had no idea. Like I said, my, my main modality was just to suppress completely and move on. And that's a that's very problematic and it becomes more problematic the more challenges you face within the the game of emotion and so learning things like this and unlearning everything that we've been taught you know like it was a really big thing in my family to say we don't get angry everybody just happy up hurry up and happy up basically was the method and it's like i can do that but it's definitely not authentic and I don't want that for myself or for my family. I want my family to be able to experience every part that I believe God made, but I want them to know how to navigate it and what purpose it serves. And so bringing it back to your question, having children has 10 X to that. And for me, again, that's because I want to be the best parent that I can be. So I am completely humble starting out having children, I'm, I was completely humbled to say, I thought I had this figured out. What I'm doing is not working. I need to change. The things I'm doing need to change. And so my wife and I, we started doing a lot more research and we started changing and we started seeing the change whenever we started making changes. And so it's been, it's been in 10X in challenge, but it's been a wonderful challenge. And it, it, is attributed to every other relationship as well. Like it's, it has carried over into every relationship that we have. It's beautiful, man. Emotional health, mental health yeah. is vital to live a really quality of life. Knowing why we do what we do goes so many layers deep that it's hard to diagnose yourself because you can't see the picture when you're the one in the frame. So you need quality books and you need quality people around you that operate at a higher level yeah. that use these terminologies as well. Um, I saw a clip the other day that I loved, talked about how, of course, to have that range to feel emotions that typically we suppress, the toxic positivity of, you know, don't feel sad, feel better. Right. Like, or what about all the, dying kids in Africa. Yeah. Like you think they, <laughs> you think they feel like this? Somebody else so, has it worse than you. Exactly. Yeah. And that is not a bad method sometimes to put things in perspective, right. but learning how to accept and include in your heart, your pettiness, your irritation, your fear jerk. Sometimes if, if, uh, if you could be selfish sometimes, um, like the shadow sides of ourself all get a seat at the table firmly 
as a part of you firmly, you know, not just to see, you know, not just like the ones that were hidden in the closet, but that way they can be witnessed without being identified with them. And I think that for me has, has uh, been great because I also, it's common for men to suppress and to numb out because that's what macho men do. That's what tough men do. Oh, yeah. um, but the mentors that I'm following now redefined what the modern man looks like and integrating the shadow part is, is so vital. You can see the people who don't because they get really uptight about certain things because they're lost in those thoughts. They're lost in the emotion. They get swept like a current versus, you know, and I meditate a lot to be able to take a, a step back and to witness what's going on. But I don't have kids right now. So I know this is going to serve me well when I do. It has served me very well with the relationships that I'm cultivating. What makes for a good friendship? What makes for a good relationship? What are the qualities that you're looking for? My opinion, one of the, a couple of main things that I look for is humility, honesty, and transparency. I've I found in my own personal experience and working with others, if you have somebody in your life that you can be vulnerable with, and you're also still safe, meaning I don't want to I don't want to like snowflake and you know, go to the word safe in that meaning. But what I'm saying is safe in the sense that you're not gonna be put down when you expose a deeper part of you. The person on the other side of the conversation is going to approach you with uh, understanding, empathy, and it's gonna create a stronger bond. When you have a relationship that has that option, that capability, there's no more small talk, which I'm really not a fan of small talk and it's so much more valuable to have real conversations with people. The amount of growth that you experience together, both individually and the relationship itself becomes exponential. And when you find that type of friend or a group of friends that you can do life with, we, my wife and I have an amazing set of friends, husband and wife also who we have bonded with for several years. And there's, there's no part of our lives that haven't been discussed and uh, that we haven't been able to help each other through, you know, where they're lagging, maybe we can help with or vice versa. And having somebody like that in your corner that you can talk to regularly and give feedback to one another and help each other grow. It's, it's priceless, especially now, like I said, with, the way that things are going and the way that people socialize today versus how it would normally be human to human connection. It takes a developed person to be able to do that. For example, if you're feeling intense amounts of anger or sadness, it can really make somebody else feel uncomfortable that they themselves don't know how to handle those emotions or hold space that is maybe some of the basic building blocks that is quite advanced for some people and you're right you know you can't be vulnerable with everybody because they have not shown that they can actually be trustworthy right. with things like that right. so it's almost like if everybody's a tryout you see how they respond you see you see how curious they are even about you because a lot of times most of the People are just stuck in their own head, in their own world, see themselves as, honestly, I think there's a term that people are saying to like NPCs or oh, non-player yeah. non characters. <laughs> you use I it? love that term. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't used it too much, but I think I might, um, when um, people are talking at you instead of with yeah. you, when they're just like hearing themselves Speed. Well, yeah, so, so, and that's exactly it. One, one main thing to look for. So, so for any listener who's like, how do I find that person? One of the first and easiest things to find is, first of all, you yourself, the way you're conducting yourself in the relationship, you need to be asking questions with genuine interest in the other person. 
And then when you're listening, you need to be listening with the intent to understand. But, but if you can see that and the other person that they're also asking questions about you and they're genuinely interested in you and they're actually listening to what you're saying and they're not just working up a response while you're talking, you're finding a person who is a real person, not an NPC who you can likely build a quality relationship with because it, it doesn't, I mean, like you said, it is hard to find people who are, who have put a lot of effort and work into themselves, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that like somebody's this grand picture of a human. It just has to be that they're willing to change and they're humble enough to know that they don't know everything. And so as you're growing, you can share things with them and they're going to grow as well. You know, this couple that I mentioned, we share books with each other back and forth constantly. And so we're growing on the, on the same levels and we're sharing information and takeaways from these books and things like that. And that, man, it's, it's amazing. It really is. It's a great, it's a great way to have a friendship. Yeah, that's huge. I think, um, I think the method to get yourself to that point, if for whoever's listening feels like, you know, these seed thoughts are starting to germinate. I'm a big fan of uh, John Maxwell. And he really talks about once you have worked on yourself and have filled your own cup, validate yourself, good self-esteem, you fill your own bucket pretty much. You can then take the eyes off of yourself and onto somebody else. And people who are really stuck in their own head are not talking about themselves endlessly because they think so much of themselves. It's actually the opposite. It's because they have a lack of self-fulfillment to not even be curious of the other person across from you. And the worst thing that I see, and it happened yesterday, I was at a pool party, like a really uh, good one with uh, quality business people. And it's an organization called Front Row Dads, actually. And um, this person was in conversation with my friend and it was the initial meeting and she was saying something and you can see like his eyes wandering and just like he was ready to leave as soon as she started speaking. I'm like, that was so rude. Yeah. And um, her and I were talking about it later on and you can feel when someone's presence is grounded versus just scattered. And it's, it's honestly healing and very powerful to deeply listen. Yes. It gives you a chance to get outside of your perspective because your perspective is not the only one. And once you come to realize that, again, I, I bring it back to humility constantly. Just having the humility enough to show somebody the respect enough to listen to them is a big deal. And it's what you mentioned is sad. And there's a lot of people who are the same way. Their attention span is very limited. Partly technology is to blame for that, but at the end of the day, it's the individual. The individual is responsible, responsible for his or her actions. And that lack of attention for somebody who you're face to face with is, it's a problem. Now you experiencing that from somebody else, I'm a firm believer that you're the one who controls your perceptions, your thoughts and your emotions. And so you don't, you know, you may feel some negative feelings about that, but as you learn to regulate those feelings, you can move yourself back into a state of calmness so that that's not a huge problem for you. But on the flip side with the, uh, the person who's doing that, it is, it's a, it's a problem and it's sad. And then the other thing that you mentioned was validation. I, I work with a lot of people and have met a lot of people over the years who cannot self-validate and it's very apparent when they're speaking, like you said, they, they're not speaking about them. I like how you put it. They're not speaking about themselves so much because they love themselves and they're so fond of themselves. More often than not, they're speaking about themselves frequently 
in the way that you explained because they're really wanting you to see something in them that they probably don't see in themselves. They need that from you. And that's an unfortunate place to be in and it's very sad, but anyone can work out of that. And that's, that's part of my message. That's part of my goal. That's part of what the company path to great helps with is helping you find that self validation, helping you validate yourself and understand that you are worthy as a human and you don't have to appease people and you don't have to live in this pretend shell of yourself. Love that. And I love the name of the company. Yeah. I want to dive into some of the methods that you help others build emotional intelligence and social well-being because those are pretty nuanced i would say and it's kind of scary like i would say business and fitness are much more simple even though they are complicated too because emotions and we're people we we make doing sit-ups complicated um but i think emotions and social and social what do you call it just social more well-being yeah social emotional well-being. intelligence and social intelligence are it, it, they're they're generally explained in contrast to intelligence quotients. So, like your the test of what you know your IQ, how how much intelligence you have. Generally, social and emotional intelligence is in contrast to that because it's it's been argued and rightfully so that social and emotional intelligence is going to take you further in life than just academic intelligence in general. And there's been a lot of um, research and deliberation about how invalid the intelligence quotient actually is because of what it tests on and how it doesn't, it doesn't cover a large variety of life. It's more specifically focused on like modern academia, which rules out a huge part of life, like the things that we're talking about. You could have somebody who has a huge IQ but is completely numb to showing somebody else on the other side of the conversation, any type of empathy. And, and if you're not able to build relationships with people and develop and cultivate those relationships, then the likelihood of you succeeding is plummeting. So some of the, I, I'm, I really like to bring everything to the basics in what I do. I love to simplify things because I don't think, unfortunately, again, talking about technology and how it has shrunk everyone's attention span. Unfortunately, most people want something that's so shiny and fancy and, you know, attractive. But the reality is that the simple stuff works better than almost anything else. It's something that you can get real and quick results in. And so one of the very basic things with helping someone work on emotional intelligence, for example, is going through, first of all, what the main primary emotions are. So things like sadness, anger, happiness, uh, frustration, well, frustration is a secondary emotion, but explaining these emotions and then explaining, at least from my perspective, what they're for. So I'm a believer that emotions are a God-given system that are a system that helps guide you through life. Your, Your emotions are are created based on your perceptions. So if I perceive somebody coming at me as a threat, my thoughts are going to generate at lightning speed. And then I'm going to start to have emotions that are developing based on those perceptions and those thoughts. So maybe I'm experiencing fear or anxiety or worry or anger. So my next step is to understand what is this emotion telling me? And every emotion carries a message. One of the main ones that I like to discuss is frustration. If I, let's say I'm working on my car and I'm cranking away on a bolt or something and I'm unable to, to get this bolt to go back into its original place, so I'm starting to get worked up and I'm starting to get frustrated. When I'm feeling this emotion of frustration, it's carrying a message that is telling me to stop and be willing to see or do things differently. But if I never know that, what ends up happening is that frustration starts to grow and maybe it goes beyond frustration and turns into anger. And then I react to this emotion 
and maybe I break something on the car or I quit, I walk away, I say some expletives, whatever it may be. And now I'm reacting to the emotion and the emotion, though it appeared, I didn't allow it to do its job. Its original core job was to tell me, hey, however you're doing this thing is not working out. Take a step back and just be willing to see it or do it differently. And if I can do that and start to breathe and regulate the, mo the emotion, then I can get a different angle on this bolt and I can figure out how to get it in and I can move on with fixing my car. So that's a very basic, primitive understanding of how it works. And the more you practice this, of course, like anything else, you get better at it when you're in a situation with another human being, uh, maybe one that you know or don't know. Love that. And it does illuminate a lot of the logical thinking to these emotions that are felt in the body. Another aspect that I want to bring into, into this is sleep, stress, and nutrition really factor into how we feel. In my journey, once I've got, once I had those things down, I guess, and movement, once I had those things down, you become a fine tuned instrument and you are able to start noticing the changes of things. Sometimes, a lot of times you can have a headache or you can actually start feeling in a different kind of mood simply because you didn't sleep well, maybe because you're going through a lot more stress than usual. So how would you say, when do you start teaching those things for your Okay. So the, so my process is actually doing, that's among the first thing that I do. So fixing your overall health and well being and your personal finances is some of the top priorities for some reason tonight, I'm thinking about cars. So I'll use another car analogy on the spot. If, if you're trying to figure out if a car is operating well, if you're wanting to drive it somewhere, you know, to get to wherever you need to go, the car serves you no purpose if you can't open the door. So if the door is so rusty and the handle's broken or the hood can't open so you can't inspect the engine, then the car is useless. And you have to fix that first before you can figure out what's under the hood. And so the analogy is your body's the same way. Whenever your health is so far out of whack, you're consuming things that are not food. Foods are things that are whole foods. When you're consuming ultra processed foods, seed oils, colors, pesticide laden foods, all those types of things, you're destroying your body. You, you truly are. And, and you know, a lot of people have contention with that because it's, it's very convenient to eat a certain type of way, but that's just, that's the baseline. And so if you're not taking care of your nutrition, like you said, your sleep and movement, you cannot ever get a good focus on your, your emotional state. You can't start to control your own thoughts and understand them. It's, it's so far down the list of priorities for you when you're just trying to keep your head above water in the sense of staying healthy enough to go to work the next day or healthy enough to walk up the flight of stairs or whatever it is. Like you really do have to get that in order. Next being personal finance. If you're drowning in debt and you're barely making enough money to make all of your, your bills, how could you possibly come home and be a good father or mother? It, it, you're, you're really, destroying all of your chances whenever you don't have these things in order. And so that's, that is the, the beginning of the process. And it leads into these more nuanced things like emotional intelligence. That's where things like faith come in, building communities, building community is actually the last thing that we focus on because I don't believe that you can be a quality person in any other relationship until you have really started to grow and develop yourself. You don't have to be perfect. Of course, you're never going to be. I'm a believer that personal growth is an unending journey all the way to death. However, if you haven't made some big strides within your personal development, I don't think that you're going to have these types of relationships that we've been talking about. Yeah, I agree. 
you have to get the foundation. You have to be fit to serve. Right. You have to take care of yourself before you could ever take care of anybody else. Brendan, where can people find you? What do you got going on? You can find me on most all social media under the name Path to Great or my, my name, Brennan Fox. My website, which is currently under construction, is pathtograat.co. You can find links to socials and some stuff that's going on there. That's the easiest way. And a book. Yeah, I, I, I published my first children's book. Um, it's just a simple children's book. I'm working on a, a children's book series right now based on the, the Bible book of Proverbs. I'm so, so excited about that. Like it's, I'm, I'm really thrilled, but it's a, it's a long ways out. So I don't really talk about it much. <laughs> Funny enough, um, the illustrator is the friend that I mentioned, the husband of uh, the couple that me and my wife are friends with. He's the illustrator. Every okay. time he sends me a new illustration, I'm just like beaming. I'm so excited about it. It's amazing. Yeah, that is exciting. I believe everybody should be. You know, I take that back. Should. That's where I get into trouble. Yeah, no more shoulds. <laughs> no more shoulds. But hopefully, I know that people who listen got some gems of wisdom. Brennan, it was awesome sharing this time with you. And I'll see everybody on the next one. Thanks, man. It's great to be here.